Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Oh, hey, Reef Dudes, come on in. How's it going today, Kai? Hey, Devin, thanks for coming by and checking out the tank here. Uh, having a great day. Good Sunday afternoon. Figured we'd show you the setup here. So I guess uh, first thing you'll notice, it's floating. Yep, the room we're standing in is actually an add-on to this house. The house itself is pretty old, and a couple years ago I decided I was gonna redo the kitchen. So I took this wall out, and I met a gentleman by the name of Fred of the Forest, and he set me up with a big wood beam here. So I uh, went to work and pulled the drywall out and started taking all this stuff out, opened up the kitchen, and at the same point in time, I figured, why don't we plumb this guy in for permanent? So I used to have a tank sitting here on a stand in the corner, and, uh, and it was great, I uh, absolutely loved it, but for the time being now, we, uh, we wanted to change it up. So I put this guy in here. I ran cripples all the way down to the foundation down in the basement there. And then we ran all the plumbing and everything at the same point in time. So you'll see at the bottom here, a couple 90 degrees, and that runs into the wall downstairs to the filtration called the little hobbit hole. And then I welded up with a friend of mine, this uh, metal steel substructure. Now the theory behind it is, is a triangle. So to fold in on itself is very difficult. So we've, uh, we've run a parallel and horizontal piece to mount it on each bracket. Uh, these guys are actually cripples running down to the foundation to hold it in place. So nice. it's actually uh, pretty impossible for it to fold in on itself. Uh, generally speaking, I have a little speaker sitting right here and it's wired in permanently into the audio system, but we really want to show off the floatiness of it. Uh, on the bottom here, to cover the bracketry, I steamed a little piece of wood and ran it across and we put in matching little metal staples that match the other guys there too. That looks really slick, man. Like it's, I love, Thank you. I love the whole floating aspect of it and it just gives it such a cool look not having a stand underneath it, which is Thank pretty you. awesome. Yeah, it's. Uh, it definitely gives that cleaner look to it. It's uh, built a lot of dirt in the baseboards, but other than that. <laughs> The, uh, the tank itself is roughly about 15 years old, I think. Uh, I got it used and I had to reseal it. It wasn't a big deal. It was in pretty good shape. A couple little scratches in it, but it is a glass tank, so it held up very well. Um, I do have a lid for it that I don't run often anymore. Uh, I just think it's kind of nice having the open top and mm. it gives a little bit more breathing room for it. I did like the fact that it kept all the dirt out, but like I said, it's kind of good to have a little breathing room on these guys. The, uh, the switches here are actually wired into the electrical system here. This guy controls my pump. So for example, when we do feed mode all I have to do is hit that, hit that switch and it turns off the drivers for all my pumps and wave makers so now I'm able to feed the fish without that constant flow and then turn it back on easily once I'm done well, that's pretty slick yep the uh, the lights themselves are wired in as well so that's a direct feed again to the breaker system there uh, nice electrical panel up high I welded up some brackets here for the lights to mount uh, these are really a modified TV bracket I was gonna say I totally <laughs> a, well, a TV mount <laughs> yeah, perfect totally. thanks Costco uh, no, I think I got it at Andre's, but uh, <laughs> at any rate, I'm running uh, the XR30 in the back and XR15s. These are the Ecotech fourth gens. Uh, absolutely love Ecotech. Fantastic product. They've always stood behind what they build and they always made a nice product. I've been running them for years now and absolutely love them. I've got fifth gens on my other tank and absolutely great product. Uh, I have a Vortec MP40 in the back corner over there. And then I have an uh, Octo Reef Octopus in the back corner here. Again, you know me. <laughs> and that's my wave maker in the back. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit cloudy. I'm sorry, I got super excited, wanted to clean it up a little bit. So in here, I mixed up all the gravel and upset a couple of corals and obviously made it a little cloudy. But um, yeah, you get the main idea. Uh, a lot of these guys have had for a long time. The tank has been sitting in this position, I believe, for about three, uh, going on four years now. So this has been permanently here for four years, but a lot of the nice. product has come from my other aquariums. So the uh, this purple tank here, I've had about eight years now, something like that. And same with the clam, she's uh, she's been with me for a long time. Uh, a lot of these corals and stuff have just moved from tank to tank to tank, and we just keep them with us. Um, the, uh, the side here has a little frag rack, so ones I'm building up here. A couple sick corals I'm trying to get back to health, like this guy here. That's a funky frag rack, actually. Did you build that one in? It's kind of like, almost like rock <laughs> on the wall. It's actually magnetic, but a friend of mine has the magnet, so I ended up just kind of pinning it in place right now so that I could get it there, but I, I love it. Absolutely That's cool. love it. Yeah, got it off another member. Got a really good price on that thing, too, actually. It was oh, fantastic. Wicked. Yeah. So in the back corners, I've got a couple other corals just growing off there. Uh, what I've been doing is I'll, uh, when I do a water change, I'll drain the water down and I take a little piece of plastic and I'll just silicone it onto the back of the tank there. Once it has a plastic surface, it's easy to bond a coral to. So for example, these guys here, I just broke them off and fragged them. So now they're growing back, but they're plating corals just like in the back on the right hand side there. Super easy to get them to stick onto it once it's plastic versus the glass. 
No, that makes sense. And I mean, you can tell once they've established themselves, see from the kind of bridge off onto the glass. Yeah, totally. Yep. It's, yeah, they take over. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's a nuisance. Now there's one cool thing with the kind of corner of bow front is those two back walls, you can totally turn into part of the scape over time by yeah, adding exactly. on and growing stuff off of the wall. It's kind of a whole new dimension to the aquascape. You've got a big clank. Yeah, starfish in the back there too. I do, yeah. There's a few of them in the sand as well. Uh, one of my favorite corals of the tank is the Blastomuse set. Had a couple issues with it when I was uh, dealing with some dino, but uh, she's come back very strong, thankfully. It's, uh, I've had it for a long time as well, and she seems to be happy again. Uh, the tank itself overall has been pretty stable. Everything seems to run the way it should be. Uh, everybody's happy. Most of the fish have been here for a long time, uh, especially these guys right here. I've had him, phew, gosh, again, probably almost eight or ten years now. All the corals seem to be doing quite well. My algae is on the decrease while the corals are on the increase. And hey, I guess it's kind of all we're after at the end, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, it's looking good, man. It's definitely looking much more vibrant since the last time I seen it. Thank you. Yeah, it seems like Coraline's my biggest algae issue now. Um, the rock work, <clears throat> that guy's actually, uh, I did this a long time ago, but it's uh, it's angle grinder. So I took the, the actual pieces of rock and glued them together and they use an angle grinder with a flap wheel to shape everything. So you see all of them kind of have their own unique character, uh, characteristics to them. This guy here is all flat, so I can actually hold up the corals like a pedestal would. Um, this guy's got a hole through it, so they like to swim through it. There was a couple holes in it, so I have a uh, carpet and enemy growing out of there. I think there's oh, one on the back side you never see, unfortunately. Uh, I've got a rock flower anemone that you never see in the pack over here as well. And that we've got a few crustaceans in there. I've got a uh, reef lobster. I've got uh, two fire shrimp in there that come out at nighttime, it seems. Um, I've got myself a mandarin goby. She's about four years old, maybe five. She's fat too. She loves coming around this time. You'll probably see her shortly. <laughs> awesome. We've got a gold rim tang right here. We've got the he's fox really face rabbit fish. Uh, gorgeous fish. Yeah, he's he's been doing really well. It's adapted well. I thought the purple would bully him, but uh, no, he held his ground enough to, hey, I'm here to stay. <laughs> yeah, awesome. It's really cool you did the oxygen too, because it's kind of like the little like island bombies everywhere, which gives it kind of a really cool look. Totally. Thank you. Appreciate that. Bird's nest on the top here isn't doing too great. <clears throat> I think she's getting too much light, unfortunately, so I'll probably have to find a new home for it here very soon or frag it up or something. But uh, yeah, she seems to be coloring up nicely. Just the tips seem to be burning or something on the top. So I don't think that's a good long-term spot for it. But uh, otherwise, I think everybody else is pretty happy in their locations. Oh, definitely. Well, things are definitely looking pretty good. Thank you. Now, if, you, if someone <laughs> wanted to do a floating tank like this, which definitely looks pretty awesome, what tips or what would you give someone to create kind of a similar effect? Um, I would say build a tank first that isn't. Make sure you're not just jumping into the hobby that you want a floating tank. Make sure you've done it before so you kind of understand flow rates, things like that. Um, really, this tank essentially was built before it was in the wall. It was actually set up with a sump setup to test it. And then I just kind of extended the cords through the wall, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, dial in your system so that you understand exactly. Because, uh, you know, there's even when I built it, I actually pulled it back apart and put in a different larger hose. And I put in less angles in it just because you, uh, you put it in, trial and error. Well, pretty permanent stuff. Um, make sure your measurements are straight. You know, make sure it's nice and level. There is no yeah. going back on it. You know, you have to be extremely precise. And uh, and I would say do a mock setup first. I actually had a fake fish tank sitting here for a long time. We put a little box on it. And we just kind of sat there and I said, okay, where am I going to put this? Where am I going to put this? Uh, where am I put a speaker? You know, and the other one is think about the future. It's not always what you have now. Think about what you can pre-wire for. So for example, this weird little switch. Um, at first I said, hey, I'm never going to use this one because I just use the feed mode on my... Uh, on my Vortec, but then now I move the controller out of reach here and I'm also using a Reef Octopus wave pumps. And all of a sudden, okay, well I've pre-wired for that, it's not an issue to it. Um, mm -hmm. And that is actually jumpered to downstairs as well. So I can turn off, for example, your flow pumps and stuff as well. So thinking about having uh, future proof. The light switch is super handy because if you have somebody come in and watch in your place, you can just say, hey, you know, when you're feeding the fish, tap the light switch. Pretty hard to say, go up to the controller, press and hold the mode button for three seconds. And then same with this guy over here, you're just gonna wanna hit pause. Uh, this way, nice and simple, easy to remember. And then you can go back, you're done, flip the switch. Yeah, it's a slick way to do it, super simple. Yep. So lots of planning ahead. And yeah, definitely turned out pretty well. Thank you, really appreciate that. Yeah, definitely love the floaty look. It gives it just such a unique look over, you know, the average style tank. Mm hmm yeah. So now, where did this all go? Do you wanna go check us out and show us the sump room? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> You're gonna love this. Oh, hey buddy, wanna see a sump? Hell yeah, man, let's check out those filtration rooms. 
So uh, checking out, we got this sweet little crawl space, which is the perfect place to hide your filtration setup. So what all do you got going on down here? Well, we run a calcium reactor over on the right hand side there. That's running through the Kamoer uh, dosing pump here, yep. dripping into this guy here. We have a calc stir sitting right behind it. That guy's plumbed into my Libra dosing pump. Excellent. How's that setup working for you? Really well. It's been super consistent, does exactly what it's supposed to be doing, holds a stable 6.2 inside the chamber, and uh, everybody seems happy upstairs. Excellent. I love that you have this all below it so you can hide everything, which is pretty awesome. Oh yeah, noise doesn't matter. There's so much room to just do everything you want in here. You can really spread out. Oh, that's awesome. So everything comes down in the corner. You got your tube coming in, goes into the Clara C filter roller. Yep, yep, that's the SK5000. Beauty, how are you liking um, it? Good, good. A couple little things I would change up, I think, on it, but they've done a great job. The quality is there. Uh, it seems to work very well. Gosh, it runs easy eight weeks. I bet you I'm for a filter roll. It takes a while. Uh, a couple little things. I had to build a little splash guard for it. I mean, we've all got our little Joey mods. Then uh, from there, here we have a little pump on the bottom that generally speaking runs into my chiller. Uh, for the winter seasons, I have it going directly into my Chato reactor here. So it's an LED reef octopus Chato reactor. Excellent. Here's my freshwater reservoir, which is actually plumbed into the house system. So wow. all of my uh, RO water is built into my laundry room. And then I've uh, fished the wiring up through the studs and up into that laundry room. Oh, beautiful. Self-sufficient. So yep. Does it just fill itself up? You bet. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Constantly full. Awesome, gotta love that, eh? Yeah, oh, it's so easy. I've never worried about it last year. Beautiful. How's the Octopus LG reactor working? I absolutely love it. Yeah? I, yeah, unreal, just a machine. Works extremely well, keeps my sump system clear. Um, honestly, it's been one of my best purchases. Absolutely love it. It's what started the chain reaction to going into Reef Octopus. The quality just speaks for itself. All the fittings are great. Um, I can't give any negatives to it, to be honest with you. Awesome. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. Well, you're definitely on the Reef Octopus. You got the calcium reactor? <laughs> is the, yeah, I do. Is the calcster? No, that's different. It, yeah. Is it? Yeah, it is. Nice. Yeah, they're all the matching system there. Uh, that wasn't on purpose, to be honest with you. It just came down to doing my research and finding yeah. a product that I really liked. Uh, the build quality is just, they are exactly what you pay for. No, awesome. Yep. Yeah, they're pretty solid units. How, so I've never actually seen that Libra, I think, doser. Has that been? This guy has been phenomenal. So it's a touch screen. You just tap that guy yeah. there. So right now you can see it's Sunday, it tells you your current time. You've got 30 mils being dosed through pump number one, 10 mils a time, and uh, it'll be three hours and 36 minutes. It will dose that 10 mils. Huh. To actually nice. program it, you just gotta hit this button here, hit the program menu. You can pick whichever one, you can vent it or do a quick dose. So now it'll just push its water through here and dose your system for you. Nice, awesome. Uh, works extremely well, absolutely love it. Oh, super cool. Solid aluminum casing, uh, really quality. I've had it now, gosh, I'm going on three years, I would say, and I've yet to replace a single pump head on it. It's extremely reliable. Good. W wicked. Yep. And then that's for your calcium reactor? You bet. you bet. That one I went and got the actual controller, so there's a fail safe on it in case there's any issues. So if it goes below six or above 6.4, it just shuts off the, uh, the CO2 into the reactor itself. Here you've got your CO2 with your bubble count here. Um, everything all wired in nice and secure, everything mounted up. Um, I should also point out this wiring is actually run right from the breaker. So I fished it all the way to the other side <laughs> of the house there. Nice. Uh, so it's on its own little separate system. That's handy. And then I've got the electrical wires run all the way across here. So you've got a power spot literally across the entire tank. Giddy. Oh, you got UV on here too, I just noticed. I do, yeah. I tucked her up there real nice and uh, out of the way. Um, it will probably change up in the future. I would love to do a manifold setup on it. So I've actually got this pre-plumbed in here where I'm going to run a uh, probably either a snapper or a blue line pump in line here. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to build a nice manifold where everything comes off because I mean, even right now I still have uh, four pumps going in here. And yeah. if I could just have one, it would just be so much easier. So I'd like to have that plumbed all the way around, maybe have it sitting out on this end here and then have it come up and have where I could just kind of plug and go, yeah. Just, uh, would be a lot cleaner, simpler setup. One pump does it all, right? Exactly. It's a nice yep. way to go. Yeah. So just in here, I run a little refugium section here. Lights yep. turn on at nighttime here. Um, these guys are just aqua rays, nothing fancy at all. Older style LED, a lot of uh, old school reefers will laugh. And, oh, I had a couple of those. And I bet we all did in the day. So going <laughs> strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this one, the whites are out, but it hasn't really affected anything. All these guys are all run into little smart adapters. So I have this little app just called the Genie and, uh, and I can just uh, control them however I'd like. I would eventually like to get into some sort of an actual aquarium controller, but for the time being, it's worked very well. Uh, I'm not the best with computers, I'll fess up. <laughs>
<laughs> so getting into something like this, even uh, just having app control of your skimmer, you know, you're upstairs being able to do a water change yeah. and you just want to turn off your return pump, boom, 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 snap, super easy. You know, then you put yeah. a timer back onto your skimmer. Hey, in 48 hours, would you please turn back on? Mm. Um, I actually just did a water change last night. So you'll see my skimmers going nuts at this point. <laughs> um, what I actually hid, so it didn't look super ugly, <laughs> is I normally have this nice little fancy setup here very so that stylish. I can walk away from my skimmer for a solid two weeks and it's a non-issue. Nice. Um, once it stops doing its thing here, it's actually quite, uh, quite reliable and just kind of does its own. Nice. It just stops all the dripping. You live, you learn. Sometimes you get floods, that happens. <laughs> but well, uh, for now, we're just letting her vent to atmosphere. Beauty. Well, the nice thing is you actually have a sweet crawl space to hide all this. It's, uh, it's funny, it's limited in height, but it's been extremely handy. And because mm -hmm. it's so limited in height, it keeps uh, the family away. So it's kind of my own area. So <laughs> it's been fantastic. I have my whole house is plumbed in behind us yeah. with the electronics. And uh, on this side here, I have all my fish stuff. So it's a great little escape down here. It's separate entrance from the house and locked yeah. and it just, yeah. It's like awesome. A it's a miniature man cave fish. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a short guy. I'm actually standing right now. So. <laughs> I'm like crawling. <laughs> No, so yeah, I tried to uh, clean up the electrical, keep it nice and safe, so you'll notice everything is mounted up top there. Um, if I can shorten the plugs, I would either shorten the wires or have them strapped up. It's uh, Everything is all secured with aluminum hangers, nothing is going to rust in there. Um, everything is on its own separate breaker, like I said, or it's secured up properly. Added just a light here so I can just do actual work when I get down here. Mm -hmm. Have it separate to it. Um, everything's all nice run into channels here. I've got my auto top off is wired into here. There's my little float switch there. Tune the osmolator. Yeah, you know, it's worked fantastic. It's, it's been, gosh, five years. I don't think I've ever had to touch it. I mean, I move it and clean it. Other than that, it's, uh, it's done its thing. I even have a spare motor sitting over there that I got uh, three years ago, and yep. it's still sitting never there. I've never, nope. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. It's just been reliable. It's good. It's a super popular one. It's definitely tried and true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beauty. Otherwise, I got myself a Curve 9 skimmer here. Like yep. I said, she's uh, going a little bit nuts here. But um, basically, it's got the cleaner on top here. Mm -hmm. Cleaner's just wired in to clean once for 15 minutes daily. And just gives it a nice little stir on the inside there. Again, just uh, does exactly what it's supposed to. Fills up that, uh, that milk jug there in roughly two weeks or so. I would say you get a pretty good collection over two weeks and then you want to drain it out. Other than that, don't really have to worry about it or touch it too much. Cleans itself and does its own thing. I get in here every uh, two, three months, give it a good wipe down. Same with my <laughs> calc nice. Every three months or so or two months, I clean that calc stirrer out. Well, you got a ton of stuff in there, I just realized. Yeah, I do. She uh, she works really good though. Honestly, it's a, it's a really good system. I've got that plumbed into the Libra so I can tell exactly how much I'm dosing. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe I do 30 mils a day right now on that guide, uh, separated into three different sections. So three times a day and uh, push is water from the bottom just like your standard reactor yep. would and gives it a stir every four hours for 15 minutes of, no i think i've on eight hours for 15 minutes nice yeah no pretty solid setup thanks thanks it's yeah. uh it's always changing you can always improve and always get better and you learn off of mistakes i get leaks all the time and this <laughs> and that and <laughs> uh there's always something right but um it's been a good hobby i i really love it it's funny little uber setup it's definitely not something you'd go buy from a store that's for sure um uh, but it's been good so if you guys enjoyed this tour, if you did, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and check back in a few months. We'll come do an update and see how the tank's doing. Thanks, Thanks again, for coming Kai. by today. Really appreciate yeah. it. Have a great Thanks. night, guys. Thank you.